Breaking news from Cape Canaveral. The Space Coast's newest giant has to wait. The clock struck midnight at Cape Canaveral, and the massive New Glenn rocket stood tall against the night sky, ready for its historic debut. But sometimes, even the mightiest machines must bow to Mother Nature. Just hours before its scheduled launch on January 9, 2025, Blue Origin made a crucial decision that has the entire space community talking. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Today we're covering a story that shows just how challenging the path to space really is, even for companies backed by some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs. You see, this isn't just any ordinary launch delay. Blue Origin's New Glenn represents years of development, billions in investment, and a bold vision to revolutionize space travel through reusability. The company had planned to not only launch their massive rocket, but also attempt something only a handful of organizations have ever achieved, landing a orbital class booster at sea. The target was the recovery vessel Jacqueline, named after Jeff Bezos's mother, waiting in the Atlantic Ocean. But the ocean had other plans. High seas in the landing zone forced Blue Origin to make a tough call, postpone the launch to Sunday, January 12th. This decision tells us something fascinating about Blue Origin's approach. Despite the pressure to launch, despite the years of waiting, they're willing to wait for the right conditions to attempt one of the most ambitious first launch recovery operations we've ever seen. Today, we're going beyond the headlines to explore what this means for the future of commercial spaceflight, the growing competition in the launch industry, and what we can expect when New Glenn finally takes to the skies. Let's dive right in. The story behind the delay. As the massive New Glenn rocket stood illuminated on Launch Complex 36, the engineering teams at Blue Origin faced a pivotal moment. The weather at the launch site was perfect. Clear skies, minimal winds, ideal conditions for liftoff. But 400 miles out in the Atlantic Ocean, a different story was unfolding. The recovery vessel Jacqueline, positioned to catch the returning first stage booster, was battling waves that threatened to make a safe landing impossible. This wasn't just about being cautious. The New Glenn booster, standing nearly as tall as a 23-story building, represents a technological marvel designed to be reused at least 25 times. Each booster costs hundreds of millions of dollars to manufacture. While SpaceX has made landing rockets seem routine, we should remember that they lost multiple boosters before perfecting their technique. Blue Origin is attempting to nail this crucial operation on their very first try. The philosophy behind the machine. What makes this attempt even more remarkable is Blue Origin's distinct approach to spaceflight. Their motto, Gratitim Ferocider, step-by-step step, ferociously, isn't just a catchy phrase. It represents a fundamental difference in how they approach space exploration compared to their competitors. Think about this. While SpaceX has embraced a rapid prototype and test methodology, accepting that some rockets might be lost along the way, Blue Origin has spent years meticulously designing, testing, and perfecting every component of New Glenn. They've built the world's largest rocket factory by volume in Florida, created a state-of-the-art engine test facility in West Texas, and developed the BE-4 engine, now powering not only New Glenn, but also ULA's Vulcan rocket. The stakes are higher than ever. This launch carries more than just the weight of a test payload. The Blue Ring Pathfinder aboard New Glenn represents the first step toward Blue Origin's vision of large-scale orbital operations. This sophisticated test platform will validate technologies crucial for future satellite buses, spacecraft, and even commercial space stations. But there's another layer to this story that few are talking about. Blue Origin has already secured contracts worth billions of dollars, including agreements with NASA, the Department of Defense, and commercial customers like Amazon's Project Kuiper. The success of this first launch could accelerate their ambitious roadmap, potentially advancing projects like the Blue Moon Lunar Lander for NASA's Artemis program and the Escapade mission to Mars. The Recovery Challenge Let's talk about what makes this recovery attempt so daring. The New Glenn booster will reach speeds over 5,000 miles per hour as it arcs through space. After separation, it must perform a complex series of maneuvers, fighting against brutal aerodynamic forces as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. 
The booster will use its BE-4 engines to slow itself down, deploy grid fins for steering, and ultimately attempt to land on a moving platform in the middle of the ocean. This is where the weather becomes crucial. Even moderate waves can make the landing platform unstable, and any significant motion could spell disaster for a returning rocket trying to touch down on a relatively small target. Blue Origin's decision to wait for better conditions shows their commitment to getting it right the first time. The human element behind every rocket launch are thousands of dedicated professionals who've poured their hearts and souls into the project. For many at Blue Origin, this represents the culmination of careers spent pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Engineers who started working on New Glenn fresh out of college are now seasoned professionals. Project managers who began planning this launch years ago have watched their children grow up while waiting for this moment. The tension in the air at Cape Canaveral is palpable. Every delay adds to the pressure, but it also demonstrates the team's unwavering commitment to safety and success. They know that rushing a launch rarely ends well in the space industry. Looking ahead, the new launch window. The new launch window opens Sunday, January 12th from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. Eastern Time. If weather conditions still don't cooperate, Blue Origin has additional opportunities through January 16th, as confirmed by FAA airspace restrictions. This flexibility is crucial for a mission of this complexity. When New Glenn does fly, it will join an elite club of heavy lift rockets capable of delivering massive payloads to orbit. Its seven meter fairing, large enough to swallow a competitor's entire rocket, will enable new possibilities for satellite deployment, space station modules, and deep space missions. A turning point for commercial space. This launch represents more than just another rocket reaching for the stars. It marks a potential shifting point in the commercial space race. While SpaceX has dominated the launch market for years, successful entry of New Glenn could reshape the competitive landscape. Blue Origin's focus on reliability and reusability, combined with New Glenn's massive payload capacity, provides customers with a compelling alternative for reaching orbit. The impact on future exploration success for New Glenn could accelerate humanity's return to the moon and journey to Mars. Blue Origin's vehicle isn't just designed for Earth orbit. It's built to support deep space missions. The company's lunar lander program, potential Mars missions, and space station projects all depend on having a reliable, heavy lift capability. The next few days are critical as we wait for Sunday's launch attempt. The teams at Blue Origin will be monitoring weather patterns, running simulations, and ensuring every system is perfectly prepared. They know they only get one chance at a first impression, and they're determined to make it count. This moment reminds us that space exploration remains one of humanity's greatest challenges. Every launch represents thousands of individual decisions, each one carefully weighed against risks and rewards. The decision to delay, while disappointing, shows the maturity and responsibility we need from companies leading us into the final frontier. The story of New Glenn's first launch is still being written. Whether it flies on Sunday or must wait a few more days, one thing is certain. When this massive rocket finally breaks free from Earth's gravity, it will carry with it not just its payload, but the dreams and aspirations of thousands who've worked to make this moment possible. For the space industry, this launch could mark the beginning of a new era, one where multiple companies routinely send massive payloads to orbit and recover their rockets for reuse. For Blue Origin, it represents the next step in their journey to make space more accessible and sustainable for future generations. As we count down to Sunday's launch attempt, we're not just watching a rocket prepare for flight, we're witnessing the next chapter in humanity's greatest adventure. The ocean may have delayed New Glenn's debut, but it's only a matter of time before this giant takes its place among the stars. The next chapter in commercial spaceflight is about to unfold, and we're standing at a pivotal moment. Blue Origin's careful approach, balancing ambition with safety, shows us that the race to space isn't just about being first, it's about being sustainable and reliable for generations to come. The story of New Glenn reminds us why we created this channel, to share these incredible moments in space exploration with a community that understands their significance. As we count down to Sunday's launch attempt, We'll be right here, 
bringing you the latest updates and expert analysis you've come to expect from Elon Musk 24 hours. If you want to stay informed about this historic launch and other breakthrough moments in space exploration, hit that subscribe button and join our growing community. Share your thoughts about Blue Origin's strategy in the comments below. Do you think their methodical approach will pay off? Hit the like button if you found this deep dive informative, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you won't miss our live coverage of New Glenn's maiden flight. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours, where space innovation meets informed discussion. See you in the next video. In November 2012, Elon Musk made an announcement that would change the course of space exploration forever. SpaceX was embarking on a journey to develop methane-fueled rocket engines, a bold move that raised eyebrows across the aerospace industry. Today, that vision has evolved into the most remarkable piece of engineering in rocket history, the SpaceX Raptor engine. The story of Raptor isn't just about technical specifications. It's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible, from its groundbreaking full-flow stage combustion cycle to its unprecedented thrust-to-weight ratio, each iteration of the Raptor engine has shattered expectations. The current Raptor 3 already generates a staggering 280 tons of thrust, making NASA's legendary RS-25 Space Shuttle engines look modest in comparison. But here's what's truly exciting. SpaceX isn't stopping there. While the company hasn't made any official announcements, Mounting evidence suggests they're working on something even more powerful. A new engine that could redefine our understanding of rocket propulsion, one that approaches the very limits of known physics. The next chapter in the Raptor saga isn't just about numbers. It's about humanity's journey to Mars, our evolution as a spacefaring species, and SpaceX's relentless pursuit of innovation. From the Elon Musk 24-hour channel, we're bringing you an inside look at what could be the most powerful rocket engine ever created. Let's dive right in. The birth of the Raptor engine marked a pivotal moment in human spaceflight. When SpaceX engineers first gathered in their Hawthorne facility to design this revolutionary propulsion system, they weren't just creating another rocket engine. They were laying the foundation for humanity's journey to Mars. The challenge before them seemed insurmountable. Build an engine powerful enough to lift the largest rocket ever conceived, efficient enough to enable interplanetary travel, and reliable enough to be reused multiple times. At the heart of their innovation was a decision that would prove both brilliant and daunting. They chose to implement a full-flow stage combustion cycle, a system so complex that even the Soviet Union's finest engineers had struggled to master it decades earlier. This wasn't just about pushing boundaries. It was about rewriting the rules of rocket propulsion entirely. The first breakthrough came with Raptor 1. At 185 tons of thrust, it matched the power of NASA's trusted RS-25 space shuttle engine, but that was just the beginning. What made Raptor 1 truly revolutionary was its use of methane as fuel, a decision that looked decades ahead to future Mars missions. When humans finally set foot on the red planet, they'll need to produce fuel for their return journey and methane can be manufactured from Martian resources. This wasn't just engine design, it was planning for humanity's interplanetary future. But the path to perfection was marked with setbacks. Early prototypes exploded on test stands, combustion chambers melted, and turbo pumps failed under the immense pressures they were subjected to. Each failure, however, taught the SpaceX team valuable lessons. They developed new materials, pioneered manufacturing techniques, and pushed the boundaries of engineering. The result was Raptor 2, an engine that would redefine what was possible. Raptor 2 emerged as a triumph of simplification. SpaceX's engineers had learned that complexity was the enemy of reliability. They eliminated countless flanges and bolts, converted joints to welds, and streamlined the engine's design. The result was stunning. 230 tons of thrust from an engine that was lighter and more reliable than its predecessor the space industry took notice. This wasn't just an incremental improvement, it was a quantum leap in rocket technology. Then came Raptor 3, and with it, SpaceX pushed the boundaries even further. The team stripped away every unnecessary gram of weight, removed the traditional heat shield, and relied instead on regenerative cooling and advanced materials. 
The SX500 alloy, developed specifically for Raptor, could withstand pressures up to 830 bar, far beyond what conventional materials could handle. When the engine roared to life on the test stand, it produced an astonishing 280 tons of thrust while maintaining the same fuel efficiency as Raptor 1. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of Raptor 3's development was its manufacturing evolution. While early versions relied heavily on 3D printed components, SpaceX began transitioning to more conventional manufacturing methods. This wasn't just about reducing costs, it was about preparing for mass production. Each Starship would need multiple Raptor engines